Reaching the moon with Starship is an incredibly difficult task. One of the biggest challenges is ensuring that the spacecraft has enough fuel for the journey. The process of refilling Starship in orbit has long been a question mark due to its complexity and technical demands. However, SpaceX executives, including President Gwynne Shotwell, have expressed strong confidence that the company will be able to accomplish this goal as soon as next year. Their optimism comes from the fact that SpaceX has spent years perfecting the systems and techniques that will make in-orbit refueling possible. So why is SpaceX so confident? How exactly do they plan to achieve this breakthrough? Let's find out together on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Time is running out for humanity's long-awaited return to the moon. As we know, this ambitious goal will rely on SpaceX's Starship, the largest lunar lander ever built. However, for Starship to reach the moon, it must first overcome one of the most complex challenges in modern spaceflight, refilling its massive fuel tanks after leaving Earth's atmosphere. This operation has never been attempted before. It it requires two starships to launch in close succession, then navigate precisely to meet in orbit and connect for propellant transfer. Alternatively, SpaceX could construct an orbital fuel depot, allowing multiple tankers to deliver propellant ahead of time. However, such a depot would need to be extremely durable, capable of withstanding the harsh environment of space, and equipped to safely store cryogenic fuels over long periods. Even with this approach, SpaceX would still need to master the docking and transfer techniques to make it work. Yet, for SpaceX, impossible has never been part of their vocabulary. During their recent World Space Business Week conference, SpaceX's President Gwyn Shotwell expressed strong confidence in their ability to achieve this milestone. We know we can dock two spacecraft, she said. We've flown Dragon to the ISS dozens of times already. Musk has echoed this sentiment in the past, explaining that because we are simply docking with ourselves, this is a much easier problem than docking with the space station, which SpaceX already does several times a year. Both executives compared the process of connecting two starships in space to the proven docking operations of the Dragon spacecraft with the ISS. In essence, the two procedures share a similar concept. One vehicle remains in orbit acting like the ISS, while the other approaches, aligns, and docks. In this case, the Starship Target would play the role of the ISS, and the Starship Chaser would behave like Dragon. However, as Musk and Shotwell have both pointed out, docking Starship to Starship will actually be simpler. Unlike Dragon and the ISS, which are two different systems, the two starships are identical, allowing for better synchronization and control. Additionally, in ISS missions, the station maintains its orbit passively, while Dragon performs all maneuvering. In contrast, SpaceX will likely have full control over both starships during refilling, enabling them to coordinate actively and dock faster and more efficiently. SpaceX has already demonstrated remarkable precision in orbital docking. The the company's Dragon spacecraft has completed 52 missions so far, including 33 cargo flights and 19 crewed missions. Every crewed mission has been successful, and only one cargo flight, the Dragon 1 mission back in 2015, ended in failure. To achieve this level of accuracy, Dragon relies on advanced LiDAR sensors, as well as an evolving autopilot system, allowing it to approach and connect with the ISS smoothly and safely. Dragon's success has been vital for NASA and the ISS program. It restored America's ability to send astronauts to orbit after the retirement of the space shuttle and has kept the station supplied with essential cargo. Meanwhile, other vehicles like Boeing's Starliner, Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus have faced repeated setbacks, delays, and technical issues. These comparisons make it clear that docking spacecraft in orbit is not a trivial task. Even experienced aerospace companies have struggled. Boeing's Starliner failed to dock with the ISS during its 2019 test flight, and Cygnus recently experienced an engine anomaly that delayed its rendezvous. In contrast, SpaceX's consistent success highlights its technical mastery and engineering excellence. This deep experience will serve as the foundation for Starship's refilling system. Technologies like LiDAR
radar will likely be adapted for the much larger Starship, and while there are new challenges to face, SpaceX already possesses the technical expertise to make it work. In terms of timeline, all signs suggest that SpaceX plans to begin refilling demonstrations next year, possibly in the first half or by mid-year. The company may conduct two test missions first to demonstrate the ability of two Starships to meet and connect in orbit. These tests would pave the way for future missions, including the uncrewed lunar landing demonstration and potentially the first mission to Mars. The following phase would then prepare for the crucial Artemis 3 mission, which aims to return astronauts to the lunar surface. Given the recent success of Starship's Flight 10, SpaceX's confidence seems well-founded. The company has already mastered several key technologies necessary for refilling, including reigniting engines in space. Upcoming missions aim to prove that both stages of Starship can reach orbit, return safely, and deploy real payloads. If all goes well, these milestones could be achieved by March or April next year, setting the stage for the first refilling test soon after. Gwyn Shotwell has even assured NASA officials that Starship will be ready in time for Artemis 3, a sign that preparations are already well underway. While technology and scheduling are critical, determination remains the final factor. Some critics argue that developing a refilling system is too complex, too costly, and too time-consuming. Others believe selecting Starship as NASA's lunar lander was a mistake because it relies on this challenging refueling process. However, this view overlooks the long-term vision behind the program. While early missions will be difficult, they are laying the foundation for a permanent human presence on the moon. Starship's large size and capacity are essential for building lunar infrastructure, transporting equipment, and supporting sustained operations. Smaller landers might suffice for short-term missions, but they cannot establish a lasting foothold. With Starship's massive payload capacity, fewer missions will be required to deliver habitats, rovers, and supplies. This efficiency will accelerate lunar-based construction and give NASA and the U.S. a significant advantage over other spacefaring nations. In this sense, Starship and its refilling system are are not just technological feats, they are strategic investments in humanity's future on the moon and beyond. NASA and SpaceX understand this well, which is why they remain committed to pushing forward despite the obstacles ahead. The coming year will be a decisive one. If SpaceX can successfully demonstrate orbital refueling, it will mark a turning point in space exploration. It would mean that long-duration missions to the moon, Mars, and even farther worlds are no longer just dreams. They would be within reach. So, do you believe SpaceX can complete the refilling system next year, just as its leader confidently predict? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's incredible journey toward making humanity a multi-planetary species. In the grand scope of things, SpaceX's docking and refilling technology still faces crucial stages of validation. The company's progress so far has been extraordinary, but the path ahead remains demanding. Before Starship can routine perform orbital refilling, every component must be tested, proven, and perfected. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues building the vast infrastructure needed to bring this revolutionary system to life, a foundation for the next great leap in human spaceflight. First, production must be scaled up significantly. Whether SpaceX proceeds with direct refilling missions or decides to construct orbital depots, Starship tankers will likely be expendable during the early testing phase. This means a large fleet of prototypes will be required, potentially around 20 vehicles in active rotation. The only exception would be if SpaceX opts for the smaller, stubby Starship HLS design for the initial missions, which could slightly reduce the number of prototypes needed. To meet this demand, the company will need to accelerate its production rate. The Star Factory in Boca Chica is already producing a substantial number of nose cones and stainless steel rings, yet even this output might not be enough to sustain the upcoming mission cadence. After manufacturing, the stacking process must also be streamlined by maximizing the use of the high bays and mid bays. Running these facilities at full capacity will be crucial to keep assembly moving swiftly. Testing must also intensify in the coming months. For this to happen, SpaceX will need to resume activities at the Massey test site, which plays an essential role in verifying tanks, plumbing systems, and flight hardware before they are integrated into complete vehicles. Rapid testing and iteration have always been the cornerstone of SpaceX's success, and that philosophy must continue as they push toward orbital refilling capability. Ground infrastructure is another key focus. 
Pad 2 at Starbase is nearing operational readiness, while Launch Complex 39A at Cape Canaveral is undergoing major modifications to accommodate future Starship launches. Once Flight 11 is complete, Pad 1 will also need to be upgraded quickly to support the next wave of missions. Additionally, construction of new launch platforms at Space Launch Complex 37 must be accelerated to provide more flexibility and redundancy. Beyond the ground systems, the Starship vehicle itself must continue evolving. The upcoming V3 version is expected to enter service soon and will be central to the refilling program. Its payload capacity is significantly higher than earlier variants, giving SpaceX the ability to deploy heavier hardware more effectively. Both Musk and Shotwell have hinted that the first V3 missions could begin as early as the end of this year or early next year, marking a pivotal step in the Starship program's growth. Another challenge lies in the storage and handling of cryogenic propellants in space. If SpaceX decides to pursue the Orbital Depot concept, the company will need to design highly specialized tanks capable of maintaining liquid oxygen and liquid methane at extremely low temperatures without excessive boil-off. These depots must also be built to endure harsh space conditions such as micrometeoroid impacts, radiation exposure, and thermal fluctuations. Internal fuel movement, known as sloshing, must also be minimized to ensure stability during operations. Even with direct refueling instead of depots, Starship's main tanks will need major reinforcement to endure long-duration stresses. The transfer lines between vehicles must also be tightly sealed and insulated to prevent leaks or propellant loss crucial for safe, efficient, and repeatable transfers. Beyond hardware, SpaceX must perfect every supporting milestone. Consistent orbital insertion, reliable engine relights, precise payload delivery, and flawless in-space docking. Each success lays the groundwork for the next, all of which must align by mid-next year to stay on track for Artemis and Mars. It's an immense logistical and engineering challenge. Every system, such as production, testing, launch, and spacecraft design, must operate in harmony. If SpaceX achieves this, it won't just secure Starship's place in Artemis, but also bring humanity one step closer to becoming a multi-planetary species. The path to completing SpaceX's orbital refilling system is steep and uncertain, yet the company remains remarkably confident. Countless preparations must unfold within a tight window, making this one of Starship's most demanding phases. Speed, precision, and focus are all essential. What stands out is the optimism of SpaceX's leadership. They liken Starship's future refilling process to Crew Dragon's ISS dockings, implying that the same expertise could soon enable this far greater challenge. If successful, it would mark a groundbreaking leap in space technology, built on years of experience and relentless innovation. Such an achievement would unlock Starship's full potential, carrying humanity beyond the moon to Mars and beyond. A dream long confined to fiction is drawing closer to reality. The question now isn't if SpaceX can do it, but when. And when that moment comes, it could forever redefine what humanity believes is possible. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.